Welcome to this unit which looks at the use and misuse of modifiers. Let's start off by explaining what a modifier is. Simply speaking, a modifier is a word that changes the meaning of another word. There are many modifiers in the English language, as indeed your mother tongue. Basic examples of modifiers include adjectives that modify nouns and adverbs that modify both verbs and adjectives. But you can also have adjectival, adverbial and prepositional phrases or other language structures which can also modify another part of a sentence. So don't think of a modifier being just one word. Now we know what modifiers are, what's the problem? In legal writing, there are three modifier errors, each causing their own problems. We will go through each of these one by one, and for each modifier error, I'll give you an example, tell you what the problem is, and how we can fix it. But before we do that, it's important to mention why these mistakes are made. In all cases, modifier problems are caused by careless writing, in which the author makes the assumption that the reader will know exactly what he or she is writing about. I'm sure you know what I mean. As you're writing, you're lost in your thoughts and com about communicating a message, and you're writing and you're writing and you're writing. You know what you're writing about, and you're making the assumption that the reader will automatically know what you're thinking about and where you're going with an idea. But the way you're writing may be clumsy and may lead to misinterpretation. You need to reread and self-edit your work to spot and correct these errors, but very often this isn't done due to time constraints and, frankly speaking, a lack of knowledge about these errors. At the end of this video, I'll say something that will hopefully shock you, but before I get to that, let's try to understand the problem. Take a few seconds to read the following sentences and see if you can spot the problem. No doubt you got it. The modifier in each sentence has been misplaced. In other words, not put next to the thing it should modify, but something else. This is what's called a misplaced modifier for self-explanatory reasons. Misused modifiers cause confusion, strange sentence structures, create funny situations, as we can see in the case of the balanced judge, or simply mislead the reader. Potentially, in the case of contracts, this confusion leads to litigation. What's the solution? Put the modifier as close as possible to the thing it should modify. If we do that, we can see the following corrections. Suddenly, everything makes a bit more sense. Take a few seconds to look at this sentence and try to identify what the problem is. This one is a bit harder to spot as in your mother tongue, the rules of grammar or use of language may prevent this error from occurring. I'll explain that a bit later. This error is called a squinting modifier. To find out why, if you look up the definition of squint as a noun, not as a verb, you'll find that it means that your eyes are not perfectly aligned. In other words, both of them are not looking forward, but one of them is looking in a different direction. Rather rudely, and I say this as someone who has a small squint, if you look at someone with a squint, you don't know which way they're looking. Modifiers can act like this, as a badly placed modifier can look at the clause before or the clause after, and you don't know which clause the modifier is modifying. In English, this is possible. If we look at the sentence, we can see that often is the modifier, but it's squinting. 
Does it refer to the legal action or the employee injury? It could be understood in English as referring to both. So we have a problem. This can be interpreted in both ways. To fix this problem, we have to add punctuation, move the modifier, or redraft the whole sentence. So, let's add punctuation. Here we've moved the modifier, or we can redraft. Please note, I'm not a fan of the punctuation solution as, the, as a general rule per se, as there are reasons for using the comma correctly. You cannot simply use a comma in an improper and incorrect way to resolve your squinting modifier, as some people try to do. A moment ago, I mentioned that this error might not exist in your mother tongue. In Polish, for example, the modifier would be understood, as I've been reliably informed by senior counsel, as modifying the following clause only. So in practice, in Polish, a squinting modifier may not be able to exist. Well, at least not in this form. In English, as I've stressed, the modifier can look both ways. So you might have to be extra vigilant when writing in English or understanding English texts to be wary of this problem. Okay, let's look at the last sentence. Read it and see if you can identify the problem. Something doesn't quite fit, right? This type of error is what we call a dangling modifier. It dangles, that is, it hangs by itself because the modifier doesn't logically connect with the main part of the sentence. In the example sentence, the dangling modifier is having used a clever disguise. The bit that follows then says the police. This logically leads us to believe that the police used a clever disguise which doesn't make a great deal of sense. If we read further, we find out that there is a thief. Aha! The thief used the clever disguise. So what's the problem? The dangling modifier needs to logically connect to the correct subject. If it doesn't, you end up creating a confusing or ridiculous situation. I'll just note here that the dangling modifier can appear at the end of a sentence as well. What's the solution? As mentioned, use the correct subject after the dangling modifier. We can see that here. A second solution would be to redraft the whole sentence, which you can see here. OK, take a second to read this example. Here we've got another dangling modifier error. The agreement clearly is not capable of negotiating all night. Only the parties involved are. So let's correct this by using the correct subject, or by redrafting, or we can do something else. We can change the dangling modifier. We couldn't do this in the first example, otherwise we would get this which doesn't make much sense. So you've got three possible solutions, but not all of them work all of the time, and that's just something to bear in mind. OK, let's wrap this up. One, now that you're aware of the three modifier problems, analyze your use of modifiers and make sure that they are correctly placed, refer directly to the issue you want to modify, or logically make sense. Two, if not, move the modifier, add punctuation, or redraft the sentence to make it clear. There are links in the video description below to other online resources that discuss modifier problems and that take a deeper look at subordinate clauses and main clauses, which might help you understand the issue of dangling modifiers a little bit better. OK, now the shocking bit. In my experience as a proofreader in Poland, 
I find that polls don't often make this problem. Polls tend to be more analytical and careful writing in English, which might be their second or even third language. So why spend 10 minutes or so telling you this? Well, you'll meet these errors in your reading, which has been written by native speakers. Yes, native speakers make these mistakes. And this is important to know, although it somehow sounds obvious. I stress this because it has happened where, uh, where a lawyer, which I work with, hasn't understood something, thought it was down to their lack of understanding of English, and called me to explain what was written. For me to say that the author made the mistake, and it's not down to the lawyer who's reading. Therefore, this is an error that you'll most likely encounter. This may present you with advantages if an English written contract goes to court in your country, but I'll leave that for another video. Okay, now we know what the problem is, why it is a problem, and how to fix the problem, we can now test the rule by doing the questions below. However, if you are unsure about any of the points which I've made, please go back and watch the video again. Feel free to pause the video to review all the examples at your own speed. After you do a question below, you can click to see a suggested answer. Just before you get started, please note the following. Please read the question and the hint carefully to make sure you complete the questions properly. Don't just get stuck into the questions, read what you have to do first. In the suggested answer, there may also be further comments to a question, so please read these carefully as well. The suggested answers are just that, suggested. There may be other also correct ways to answer each question. I've tried to put in as many variants as I can, but for obvious reasons I can't write every single correct answer, so as long as your answer follows the main points highlighted in the suggested answer, your answer should be okay. The questions are designed to practice the rule in this unit, so although you can make further corrections to the rest of the text based on the other rules in this course, the answer only concentrates on the rule presented in this unit. And finally, Please don't get lost in the legalities of the question text. It's there only to provide material to practice the rule, not to be a law lesson. All that being said, off you go.